Welcome to Three C's of Core Banking, a very interesting webinar on customer preference, cloud, and collaboration as part of the IBSI Knowledge Roundtable series. I have very interesting panelist members today with me. I'll just quickly introduce uh, so Arun Krishnan, who heads engineering at Infosys Pinnacle is with us with a significant number of years of experience. Paramdeep Singh, who heads intellect on the core banking business and is a partner. And Rahel Iqbal, uh, who is an innovator and a managing partner at Code Based Technologies. And he has built a next generation core banking with very, very interesting digital banks being deployed on it. And my name is Chetan Parekh. I'm the partner at Cedars FinTech practice. We're here to discuss very interesting subject of what's the future of co-banking systems and how do we see the market as well as what does it mean when we say three C's from customer preference, cloud and collaboration. So I'll be covering that followed by interesting presentations from Infosys, Intellect and Codebase colleagues of mine. So when we look at the co-banking, uh, it's 2,500 deals in the last five years. Uh, so it's pretty large number of investments by banks, global banks. And on an average, 450 to 500 deals happens yearly. And then last year was no different. So everybody thought COVID would have an impact. The volume has decreased by 10 to 15% to previous year where we had a growing volume. And large banks still account for 20% of the co-banking deals. So there's a bulk of deals which is happening in co-banking space, which is tier two and new generation digital banks. Interestingly, 10% of these were on cloud, approximately 50 odd deals were on cloud based. And increasingly, if you see the community banks and credit unions are the biggest takers last year, Commercial banks, another similar 30% odd. And digital banks, interestingly, is only 6%. So though there is a real innovation happening there, uh, they seem to be using more product processors compared to the traditional co-banking platforms. Looking at little more deeper, if you look at 450 deals and large banks contributes 25% of it, small banks, which is tier two and tier three banks are 70 to 80% of it. And digital bank is near 5% number and hosted on cloud is around 10%. Now on left hand side, you see some leading challenger banks who has successfully implemented their challenging value proposition, but they still have gone with a core banking platform at the back. So where there was been a thinking that these banks are predominantly using digital only. But that's not true necessarily. You can see Mambu, which is a cloud-based co-banking platform, Thought Machine, Profile from FIS, Oracle's FlexCube, Infosys, Pinnacle, and multiple platforms being utilized by many of these leading banks on digital space. When you look at the traditional side for the large banks again, a fair bit of investments from ADCB on Oracle FlexQ, BNP Paribas on a next generation Finistra Core, Amrits NBD, which has recently gone on to the latest Finicle 11X platform, Fab uh, using Teminos, but selecting Intellect for its global operations uh, and rollouts, First Rand Bank, which is running FIS. So, very really large size deals across the platforms. So both challenger and the traditional core banking players are using similar platforms, which is either the tier one and tier two platforms or a next generation core banking platform, which are on cloud. When we look at the core banking, the three things which comes to mind, one is customer preference. So customer preference is fast shifting. Traditionally customers, or banks used to see functionality as a major differentiator. But that has changed. Uh, 
given the digital and other channels taking significant workload, it's become a 24 by seven operations. Most banks are moving from uh, nine to five to 24 by seven platforms. While ATMs were already always there, they were available in a night mode. Whereas now banks are looking for branches and digital banks to be available on real time basis. So really the posting real time to the GL, a uh, quick launch of product configuration. These are some of the key customer preferences. On cloud, again, there is a deep interest around the globe, the road, rules and regulations are changing. Markets like UAE, Bahrain are allowing cloud now, full-fledged, as well as collaborations. Uh, suddenly the co-banking has become in the center of a lot of collaborations, API enablement, and alignment to the fintechs. So when you look at the customer preference, when we say real time, our real time would mean API enable, which can be used by digital channels, ability to execute in real time, alerts, communicate to the customers real time. Product parameterization is to swiftly launch the new products, reuse the components and bundles, and ability to have a modular architecture. Now customers have moved away from a big bang replacement because that disrupts enterprise for 12 to 18 months. So the module by module is a new way forward for upgrades on co-banking space. So componentization of co-banking system is very, very important from customer preference perspective. Moving further on the cloud, Cloud, which was once seen as mainly used for surround systems or HR systems and ERP systems, is fast getting on to adoption in banking space. Most central banks are changing their rules and regulations. Cost pressures, which has happened over the last 24 months because of COVID, has created an immediate need for operating expense-driven module shorter time to market where they can implement microservices based architecture, move it to the cloud and deploy solution in a very short time. Most digital banks have five to six months to launch and highly secured. Enterprises have understood the security from cyber perspective as well as internal security is very important. So banks like Capital One have moved on to AWS, Starting last year, Lloyd's have started a three-year movement to Google Cloud. Amrit's NBD has built their own private cloud and moved Live, which is their digital bank, as well as Pinnacle Core onto the private cloud platform. Again, when you look at the collaboration, that's a major trend. Enterprises have started modernizing their core banking, not for the user communities only, but for fintech innovation and offering the API. So enhanced offerings, BPC, one of the biggest bank in France, going with WISE on payments and transfers, Barclays tying up with Flux and driving through their FlexCube backbone, the Flux. Again, acquiring new competencies around WISE. Uh, Access partnered with conversational AI giant, TVI, Active AI has 150 plus banking customers now and quite a significant volume. NetWest have tied up with Synchron and Synologix to do intelligent checks on the payments and compliance side. And banks have adopted a new generation digital model. A committed NBD has Live, ADCB has Simply Life. Both of these UAE banks have gone with the present generation partners, Finical and Intellect on their innovation journey. So I'll invite at this point, Michael e. Arun to share his experience from the other side of the table and give us his perspective from Finical. Thank you, Chetan. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're in the world. Uh, thank you for making time to join us today. 
before I start, I'd like to wish you, your families, colleagues, clients, uh, good health. Uh, it's a, it's a, it has been a, an especially trying time for many, many families across the world. And it's a sign of the times that many of us are just working from home at this point. Um, the three C's of core banking is a very uh, interesting topic. So I'd like to also thank uh, you know, Cedar and IBSI for arranging this uh, conversation. I hope to share a few perspectives with you. Um, clearly, um, these are our perspectives and some of them may even provoke, uh, and I hope I do provoke some thought in you and uh, make you think differently. Uh, we can move on to the opening slide. So the first thing I'd like to do is start with a simple proposition. Uh, as Chetan said, at some point, people declared the core was dead. Um, and this has been our experience. The core is dead. Long live the core. Uh, if you imagine core to be like a gas-powered car, it is indeed dead. Uh, but if you reimagine it as an electric car, I think it has got a longer life. Uh, this is kind of our uh, idea that we have behind our Finical. And uh, what we see is literally, uh, I would say, a tale of two cities. I think Chetan spoke about a 10 to 15% uh, decline in, in some of the deals. And actually, we're having the opposite experience. Uh, and I think it's because of this interpretation of core. The old core is dead. The new core is alive and kicking and, and actually taking our clients forward. We can move forward. Um, the proof really is in how applicable Finical has been across uh, multiple segments. So you can see on the left-hand side, we have different segments of banks, each one uh, addressing their journey into core in a different way. Uh, Chetan spoke about Live, for example, or Paytm, and they're very different, and yet they find a common story, common set of capabilities and core that they can leverage in their own journeys. And that brings us back to the three C's. Uh, we can move forward. So three C's, I would say, uh, and you know, we thought when we were thinking there are more C's and it's, you know, it's a sea of confusion and all of that stuff, but the three C's probably allow us to see the core differently. And it's useful to look, look at it through this lens. So if you look at customer centric, I just say, um, the word that comes to mind is really, how do you humanize banking? And you know, I'm interpreting customer again as the end customer of our clients. Uh, it's really about humanizing banking. So I just want you to remember that word. It's about humanizing all the services we, we provide. The second is cloud native. And I like the word cloud only because the world has really moved to cloud only. It does not matter whether you choose to host the solution in a, in a private cloud, on-prem, even on-prem. Um, if you take OpenShift, it's, it's a cloud only infrastructure. And so I think it's good to think about cores that are designed uh, for such environments because that is the only way. And uh, the third is collaborative. Of course, the world cannot be tackled on our own. There's a lot of great innovation. You see a lot of partners and it's fantastic to create value together for um, you know, our customers together. It's just a win-win. So maybe we'll start with humanizing uh, just one of these services. Take, take something as simple as a payment service. Typically, when we look at a payment service, I'd like to draw your attention to the row at the bottom. You think about the system. And that's what we think about. We think about data for the system, you know, the account number, the amount, and so on, controls, limits, and, and things of that nature. Um, and you might even have uh, things like engagement, like a customer segment-based uh, suggestion. This is kind of the limit of our imagination, usually. Um, what I'd like to suggest to you is that there's another layer we're missing, and that's the humanizing of the service. You see the layer above. There's a lot of considerations we can have about preferences that people have. You know, I don't want to be filling a form for a computer and saying, here's an account number. I don't want to think in terms of that. I want to think in terms of paying people. And you want to have that experience consistent across channels. So that is an example of humanizing the data portion of it. Humanizing the control portion of it is some preferences that we have. Some, uh, you know, take corporate uh, banking, for example. A corporation sets up its own rules and so on. That's an example of humanizing the control aspect of it. And really, that's not within the control of the bank anymore. Uh, humanizing engagement. Uh, there's a lot of interesting examples there. And this is all about looking at the behavior of the person and injecting that insight into the moment of truth. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is we talk about all these things, but um, unless we have a platform that's, uh, that does this consistently, uh, we will not be able to realize the full benefit of this. We have seen a lot of episodic um, sort of reactions to each of these things, but we feel uh, that we need to have a platform. Uh, to actually solve this problem. We can move forward, please. So 
Um, this actually requires us to think of the core very, very differently. Typically, we think of the core at the center as processing stuff. Uh, I would like to just suggest you invert the picture. Invert the picture completely and invert where you invest the platform. Look at the customer at the center and invest your platforms there. So have an omni-channel platform, an API platform, an event platform, data platform. I'll talk about that a little more later. And then we wrap that with experience services, in, which is the humanized version of the services that we have, engagement components, process services, business APIs. Go step out a little bit and you have components, enterprise component, business components, not only the components that our clients build, but also that can be drawn on from the market. You know, you may have a best-in-class deposit product some, some, somewhere else. And so the world sort of expands from there. But at the end, it all converges into a single customer. Now, this, this graphic may look a little cute, uh, but it's significant because it's the customer is the reason we do all these things. And the world can keep expanding when the customer remains the same. And we like to think of the strategy as embedding with the platform, engaging with the kinds of services that we build, and then enabling with all the capabilities that either we produce or do in conjunction with partners. So embed, engage. Uh, I'm sorry, could you go back, please? I just want to cover one more point. Yeah, engage, embed, engage, and enable. And you see cutting across all of this is cloud native automated and AI, uh, really embedded into all of this. Thank you, Chetan. Please go to the next slide. So specifically speaking about Finical's approach to a customer-centric platform for humanizing banking, we have a product called the Digital Engagement Hub, which sits at the center of all this interaction. And what it does is the three bullets you see on the bottom right, ensures consistency across channels in a headless way. So I'd like to encourage you to think of channels not in terms of mobile or e-banking. Think about channels as Netflix. Uh, think about channels as uh, WeChat. Uh, they're all headless. The reason I'm mentioning this is the UI is not under your control. Very important point, and yet the experience has to be under your control. So that's, that's usually a kind of a mind bender for a lot of folks. They always think about a drag and drop tool uh, when we think about experience, but that's really a UI builder, it's a rendering. The experience is really a function of all of these uh, preferences and injecting intelligence into the moment of truth, and you need a platform for that to do it consistently across all the channels. So that's what the Digital Engagement Hub does. Um, we can move forward, please. So let's take the second point. Um, I, I said cloud native is interesting, but cloud only is a lot more interesting. And I would suggest that cloud only has exhibits all of the characteristics that you see on this slide. You might see in uh, literature something called 12 factor and beyond the 12 factor. We have sort of condensed it uh, into these factors that you see. Uh, and it's important that every single service that you have, as we have in Finical, meets the 12 factors. Um, it is also, you know, cloud agnostic, uh, so you can choose to host on any provider, um, and and it really follows all of these principles. Now, where do we see the proof of the pudding? It's it's in, you know, in countries that are facing, like in India, we face a huge volume of UPI transactions. The growth is so astronomical that if we did not have a truly elastic core all of the promise of UPA would collapse because ultimately all those transactions hit the core. And we did face this in, in, in phases. Initially, we were, we were thinking about a branch automation, then we talk about ATMs, and then we talk about mobile. And each step has been several orders of magnitude. We're talking about billions of transactions a month are now going through uh, largely finical based systems in India. So the, the proving of the elastic planetary scale uh, is really from this cloud-only architecture that we have. Uh, I'd like to move forward, please. And Finical really is available on a full range of cloud and SaaS offerings. So, you know, the, you might hear things like, is it client managed, is it private, is it... Uh, the key point I want to make here is the earlier principles are followed. These are all deployment choices and, and business uh, arrangements that we make. You could choose to deploy it on-prem or you could choose to deploy it in a, in a public hosted provider or private cloud that, you know, it's the same code. That's an important point I want to make. Our releases are always built on the same code, exact same code. Uh, we can move forward, please. The third pillar was about collaboration. And here I'd like to again offer a thought. This is something you know we sort of learned through our journey. We started with APIs and we said, you know, we were using APIs internally. Uh, and so we said, hey, why not just expose that? And that's what we have done in our offer. Uh, but what we realized that there was insufficient. I think there are two models that are important to keep in mind with data at the center. And it's important to keep the data model at the center, but then there are two ways of interacting. There's API. There's also event-driven design. 
And I think ignoring event-driven design as a way to collaborate would, would be doing a disservice to the um, value that uh, our clients have in terms of the, um, their investment in core. So our approach is really look at data. And even in data, you see a separation between OLTP and OLAP. There's tons of data that's today, oftentimes we deal with in an OLTP manner that uh, you know, deserves to be respected as an OLAP uh, model. So a lot of what we do is actually OLAP oriented. So we have actually have an explicit response for that with our data lake. Um, we have an API uh, platform called uh, API Hub, which is cache empowered. So it gives you highly performant APIs. And on the right-hand side, you see the event manager with the event-driven design. So I really think our, our approach is really going beyond the API to look at all of these and give you a very robust way to collaborate and create and synthesize really services, uh, both individually and collectively. We can go to the next slide, Chetan. So in summary, I would like to say that when we, if you are seeing the core differently and look at them, look at the core through these three pillars, customer centricity is really, the important investment is really platform to humanize own engagement by design. What I mean by that is um, I would be wary of handing this off or outsourcing it to somebody else. It's very important for the bank and the owner to own the design uh, of the engagement. And it's okay to have different kinds of rendering. So tools are okay for different kinds of rendering and technology, but owning the engagement and the preferences and choice is important. So your client always knows they're dealing with you. And the third point is ensure front to back coherence. I spoke about the um, UPI payments uh, to create that kind of fast responsive experience. It's important that the core is really ready uh, end to end and you need investments in every layer. Cloud native. We spoke about 12 factors. We spoke about cloud neutrality and the proven elasticity and security, very significant in cloud. On the collaborative front, um, certainly collaborating create many UIs or no UI uh, is a great way to expand and embed, uh, I would say, the services that you provide. Consuming as well as integrating service APIs and using a platform approach to it uh, is, is very, very critical. And then we would suggest go beyond APIs, uh, look at events, look at data, uh, I think you'll see uh, our client, uh, you mentioned ENBD and uh, in, the, in the region, uh, they certainly have a much more mature view of, uh, of, of this um, idea and um, are proponents of this uh, notion. So in summary, I, I think seeing the core differently actually makes us very, very relevant. Uh, and you can see the core more as an electric car than you would a gas powered car. We can go to the next slide. Um, and, you know, all of this is great. The real proof is in the results that we see, um, as you can see from the magic quadrant, uh, as well as the assessments, independent assessments of a thousand banks. The, our customers are actually realizing the full potential of all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you. And we're certainly happy to engage with you. If there are any of our clients, existing clients um, as participants, we'd like to thank you for your support and encouragement and your ideas. It's you who inspire us to do great things. And we certainly will continue to do that. Uh, Chetan, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Arun. I think very, very interesting perspective uh, from Infosys here. And I'd like to invite now Parandi uh, from Intellect uh, to give us his perspective on how Intellect sees uh, the journey of the core and the three Cs. Thanks. Thank you, Chetan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the attendees. Uh, I will uh, you head to the next slide. I'd like to introduce how we have gone about trying to power a champion core. I'd like to start with some of the key resonating mm -hmm. themes mm -hmm. and our intelligence. Mm -hmm. Move on to, pattern. no, Move on to patterns. Move on to patterns and expectations. And then share a little bit more of, about how we went about designing a decathlon core. And then finally, key takeaways that I'd like to leave behind in terms of what could be important for evaluating a core. Moving ahead. So in terms of resonating themes, uh, we to go to the next slide. Uh, we see a large global trend moving towards persona-based experience driven through om uh, omni channels, at the same time achieving mass personalization uh, for its customers. A uh, best of breadth in functionality uh, with solutions from a core banking partner or its ecosystem is the trend that we are seeing as a resonating theme. Over and above this, the trend towards embedded finance into the products, uh, which could be a consumer product carrying a finance 
uh, an Uber with a wallet uh, are all trends that we see coming through. And then finally, in terms of uh, cloud, uh, the need for a cloud native, cloud agnostic architecture uh, with, with many providers moving towards digital twins and cloud uh, operations. Moving ahead. Uh, intellect is a digital product powerhouse. I won't spend too much time on, on, on this slide, but just give you a feel about how we work with 276 customers across 100 countries with consumer banking, transaction banking, treasury and risk products. What's interesting is how Intellect's been climbing up the charts with a, and we are ranked number one for retail and wholesale banking by IBS Intelligence. We have been in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for seven years uh, as a leader. And we are a top scorer in what Gartner calls the peer insights where partners of core banking solutions rate their services and happy to share that many larger core banking solutions lag us in this survey. Forrester rates us as a strong performer and then finally Celent rates us for a breadth of functionality. Moving ahead. Uh, we see a, a trend in the market in terms of core uh, with uh, obviously our transaction banking suite being used by many large tier one banks. Sorry, the slide changed. Sorry. Uh, our transaction banking suite being used by many large tier one banks. Our intellect digital core built on exactly the same cloud native microservices API first architecture is now winning hearts and minds across many uh, CIOs, whether it is in Europe or, or in the MENA region. Some of the use cases that I'd like to build further on is, the, is how we are working closely with the European retail and SME bank, uh, how we are working with the MENA digital lifestyle bank and a digital challenger bank in Europe, besides having executed Santander's private bank in the UK. Moving ahead. So the first use case is really of the work that we have done, that we are doing with a European bank on a retail offering, which allows its customer, Eva Anderson, to get help for both financing and shopping needs uh, with an easy onboarding and instant loan on debit and credit purchases, the ability to borrow in her way with the repayment simulator, with a choice of loan options, whether it's cards, personal loans, invoice finance or subscription finance, the ability to have multi-scheme payments uh, in the Nordics and Europe, including capabilities still to come on board like the P27, easy shopping with credit cards at retailer stores with uh, e-commerce enabled virtual cards, as well as an Apple Pay enable enablement. And finally, easy savings through aggregator partnerships, including with Raisin. All of this is also powered with personalized and contextual offers driven by AI and ML. In, and, and this is what allows Eva to, to really meet all her financial and shopping needs. Moving to the next slide. For the same bank, in terms of their SME and retailer offering, a client like Specsaver franchise is able to easily onboard and, get, and use a servicing platform for a 360 degree view of, pen, of pending payments and customer purchases, has multiple payment options enabled at POS, whether it's on card, buy now, pay later, invoice finance or subscription finance, can build their own business with innovative finance options, including subscription finance that can help lock repetitive business or factoring, which can help in reducing the financial burden. All of this is along with the usual SME deposits, customized loans and customized accounts and, and payments being provided in one solution pack, thereby having the bank helping spec savers grow their business. Moving to the next slide. Uh, in the MENA region, we are working with a retail lifestyle digital bank uh, where uh, Ani Fatima Khatun gets all her lifestyle needs met through one app with an easy digital onboarding with facial recognition and ID match using AIML, minimal data entry because of OCR on edge, 
the ability to borrow any way that she wants, DNPL, microcredits, card, or installment finance, ability to pay at retail points with multiple options, credit, debit, wallet, tap and pay, access to e-commerce and shopping uh, with a full e-commerce marketplace with rewards and loyalty coupons, ability to save with goal-based savings, and then finally personalized and contextual offers, including gamification that give her uh, what available offers she can uh, use. Moving on ahead. And finally, I spoke about the Santander Group's private bank, uh, Catter Allen, where Andrew, uh, as a customer, has all his personal and business finance needs met, uh, including a portal, which also is used by the IFA to onboard customers like Andrew and service him. Single view of own and business accounts, the capability of open banking and embedded finance with almost 33 partners and PFM bill extension, all managed services provided within the solution and access to retail and SME deposits and, and also SME accounts. In summary, all of Andrew's personal and business finance needs are met by, uh, by Catcher Allen through the solution provided from Intellect. Moving ahead. So in terms of patterns and expectations, if you can move forward, uh, traditionally the, the uh, core banking solution was assessed and seem to be simply a choice of a binary solution. I'm gonna draw, draw an analogy here from the Olympics. If you go to the next slide, most CIOs either wanted the agility of a sprint from a core banking solution, just the capability to execute fast, while some others wanted uh, it for its endurance, wanted to last five or 10 years, also have the capability to scale up. But at Intellect Design, We've actually been inspired once again by, by, um, by combining what we see as capabilities in terms of our observation of a decathlon. So we believe that uh, at the Olympics, even though the most remembered athlete is the 100 meter sprinter, but the best athlete is actually the decathlete, which, who is able to run across multiple areas. If you can move to the next slide. Therefore, this solution, uh, in terms of a decision is now way beyond binary. We have drawn inspiration, like I said earlier, if you go to the next slide, from, uh, uh, from designing our winning code with inspiration from a decathlon champ. Now, what skill, skills does a decathlon champ need? He needs speed, strength, agility, spring, and endurance. And some of this has inspired our creation for an ideal, for an ideal code. The ability to deliver on customer ask with speed, which is effectively contextual. The ability to deliver strong and comprehensive capabilities. Provide, the, provide a configure and consume in terms of composable microservices. The ability to jumpstart with a connected ecosystem, which is similar to the capabilities on Spring for a decathlete. And then finally, how a solution needs to scale on demand and which is where the cloud came in. So Chetan, I took the liberty of increasing the five, C, the three C's that you put up to five. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about how we it took inspiration from there to design our decathlon core. Can you just move on? So the five C's is really what helped us reimagine the entire core offering. If you can go forward and, and one more click. And therefore what we have done is looked at the resonating themes, uh, one click please. We looked at the resonating themes and the inspiration that, you drew, that we drew from uh, uh, the spirit of a decathlon to look at contextual experiences, comprehensive capabilities, a composable microservices, a connected ecosystem, and then finally the, the sheer importance of a cloud native architecture. If you can go to the next slide. Uh, in terms of contextual experiences, we've been working with multiple partners to be able to deliver on goal-based savings and PFM with analytics on spends, uh, detailed uh, uh, spend across categories, uh, the ability to have contextual notifications, including for many countries for, in Europe, the ability for even rewards on family chores, and then a cash flow forecasting 
With this, we believe uh, the solution helps to increase end customer satisfaction and drive revenue. Moving on ahead. Uh, AI and ML also pass multiple other contextual experiences, whether it's in the servicing or engagement with personalization, NLP-based chatbots that drive financial conversations, a sound recommendation engine, which takes care of the next best product and allows for push notifications. Similarly, on the engagement side, uh, the role played by churn analysis and intelligent voice banking helps in making the solution more contextual. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, comprehensive capabilities that allow a business leader to, to deliver on quick GTM, uh, whether it is covering cards, including uh, credit and retailer cards, virtual cards, CASA and deposits, the leverage of the ecosystem that Chetan also spoke of in terms of our FinCloud, transaction capabilities, uh, in, including utility payments and PFM, uh, payments and wallet capabilities, and then loans. All of these capabilities being available as composable microservices on the cloud is what powers the, the, the third and the fourth C of comprehensive capability and composable microservices. Moving on ahead. Uh, a connected ecosystem helps in driving an open banking and also BAS with, uh, with regional uh, providers coming in to extend the solution, uh, which is hosted on the cloud. Uh, moving on ahead. Uh, and finally, with the cloud native architecture, which is microservices and API based, uh, helps in reducing the complexity. It is catering to all the popular clouds, whether it's AWS, Azure, or Google. The capability for a digital twin or a sandbox to help a business manager realize his end state uh, visualization and also do what we call a test drive, a limited period test drive. And then finally, an integration SDK that takes care of not just current, but future integration needs. In summary, a strong cloud native platform. Moving on ahead. I'd like to leave you, yeah, one more click. I'd like to leave you with, with some thoughts. Is your core ready for the decathlon? Here are the five C's test. Are you being able to offer a contextual experience to your customers? Does your CIO commit comprehensive capabilities right across to expand the core capabilities? Do you have a composable microservice easily accessible? Uh, are you able to leverage partners uh, from a, in a connected ecosystem? And then finally, is your solution truly cloud native? If you have concerns answering any of these questions, we'd be happy to assist with, uh, with what would be a limited period test drive and take the conversation forward. Uh, thank you very much for listening in and I look forward to interacting. Thanks Paramdeep, very, very interesting 5C perspective. And I'll now invite Rahil, uh, who has himself innovated onto the next generation core and actually worked around the challenges which most of the digital organizations face on using the digital core. Rahel? Thank you, Chetan. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, definitely, uh, my panelists, the colleagues, uh, Arun and Pramdeep, has given a lot of insight in terms of how the markets are moving um, and how people are considering, especially the CIOs and uh, the, the industry on selecting the core banking systems and having a, a robustness around the core. Definitely core is dead, uh, but we long live the core. Uh, we have, we are on the same uh, thought process of core will survive. Core, uh, however, it, it has a new uh, face of it. And we as code-based technologies, uh, being a global open API banking solution provider, uh, supporting the, both the traditional banking institutions, financial institution, as well as the fintech ecosystem, are helping them demystify the digital financial services. There are a lot of things out there in the market, and we help institutions demystify uh, by delivering and creating innovative and intuitive experiences across the life cycle. Um, 
our award-winning product, DigiBank, uh, is a bank-in-a-box uh, proposition, a comprehensive one-stop solution uh, for traditional as well as neo-challenger banks. Um, and we've been operating across uh, the three continents, delivering services and solutions to our uh, cloud native customers around the world. Next slide, please. We've been supercharging digital banking, uh, both in this region and outside the region as well. Uh, as everyone have, would have known, uh, Zand Bank, uh, GCC's first completely digital bank proposition uh, with retail and corporate. Uh, we've built it and, uh, and basically working with them to deliver both retail and corporate digital proposition, uh, completely cloud-based, uh, API-driven. And what, what we would like to uh, showcase is our proposition has been ground, has been built scratch uh, from ground up. Uh, looking at the new technologies, uh, looking at the modern tech stack, uh, helping institutions adopt to the newer uh, models, uh, but without even rip and replacing. So we have uh, been uh, servicing our clients who are transitioning into the digital banking foray, helping them institutions uh, launch new digital propositions, digital banks, di digital brands as well. Uh, Zand is one of them, Capital Bank out of Jordan in Iraq. Um, we're basically helping uh, fill the financial inclusion gap for over 40 million unbanked citizens in these two countries. Uh, using our complete digital core with a full uh, financial ecosystem around, built around the customer life cycle. Uh, we also did Bahrain's first digital bank, Jazil, from Kuwait Finance House, a traditional bank going into a digital uh, proposition uh, and leveraging their existing platforms and launching them in less than three and a half months, uh, Dubai Islamic Bank. So large institutions have been trusting us with their digital banking and digital core uh, services uh, with the new modern API based tech stack. And what we see today uh, as uh, overall within our clients is our proposition mode. Uh, we are not a technology vendor. We do not sell you the license and just leave. What we do is we help the organization launch a digital brand, uh, work towards with to, together with their business teams. And we basically tick off their KPIs uh, overall. And we use technology as an enabler rather than just a driver. So business remains the main key context of how financial institutions want to attract, acquire, retain new customers. And we help them using technology uh, to enable all of those visions of, uh, of the banking industry. Next slide, please. So why do we, what are the key principles to go digital core? Uh, one thing is, yes, the core has to be digital and have to support, but why does a bank require uh, a, a to go towards a digital core? As we all know, the three Cs which you mentioned, it fits in very well. Customer first perspective. It's all around the customer, what the bank is dealing with. There are segmentations and today it's beyond mobile banking. People mistakenly takes it as, okay, I've, div I've given a mobile approach or omni-channel approach, that's digital banking, but it is all beyond that. Hence a customer first perspective and ensuring that we are able to deliver the digital promise, not just a facade or a thing that we have driven, we've given a, a, a omni-channel solution, but the process at the back remains uh, same manually intensive and operationally intensive. It, it defeats the purpose. So customer first perspective goes hand in hand with the ability and delivering the promise, what we've done to our customers and to our internal stakeholders as well. The second point would be the frictionless API collaboration. So there are a lot of ways to collaborate and there are, there are APIs all available all across. You'll find APIs on the SaaS provider, you'll find APIs uh, in, internally, but how do you make sure that those APIs are frictionless? How do you ensure that you give the flexibility to your consumer channels or to your external partners for them to deliver the experience and not bogged down by your restrictive APIs? So having APIs is one thing, but having the ability to utilize those APIs in creating multiple kinds of experiences on the go that is something which is truly frictionless 
and which is uh, fostering collaboration. Standardization is one aspect of it, but giving the flexibility on how to use it, where to use it, and come up with your own experiences. So we focus primarily on those uh, process-oriented foundational APIs, which can be used in multiplier effect to create as many experiences in the banking institution or their ecosystem partner want. And lastly, uh, how do we leverage the cloud? Cloud, as uh, Arun also mentioned very clearly, that cloud is one of the deployment models, how we see it, but it could be even on-prem uh, with the use of the likes of OpenShift or any other platforms. Uh, we have seen customers deploying our platform in a cloud-ready format in an on-prem Kubernetes cluster. So cloud technologies, cloud abilities, and cloud nativeness is something what is part of the key principles uh, why we should be looking at a digital core uh, on, on an onset. Next slide, please. So I would want to talk about one case study today, uh, which we have, uh, which we're currently doing. And it's a, it's a very interesting proposition. It, it, it revolves around a digital core, but to demo, democratize it and be able to offer in a multi-tenant public environment. Uh, we've seen institutions looking at the managed services model uh, for their own entities or for their in, internal use. But what we've done is we have partnered up uh, with, with a one of the largest FinTech in Africa. And we're now targeting how can we look at the financial inclusion agenda and assist the micro financial institutions who cannot afford a typical core platform or, a, or an omni-channel platform for that matter. We are actually working to democratize that aspect and bring in a banking as a service model uh, for Africa region where we are able to deliver the promise of financial inclusion whereby assisting micro institution who may have 5,000 customers, who may have 2,000 customers or who may have a million customers, all at the same level of enterprise technology using our in-country model of SaaS proposition. And that has changed and that will change the entire conversation on the African continent and beyond that how are we trying to service the, the, the final customer, the end customer, because these customers are spread across and we are not able to reach to them through entities like tier one banks or tier two banks. And hence a, a, a huge gap existed. And we looked at it from a FinTech perspective and we invested in that model uh, as code base with, along with our partner and, uh, drive, and brought in a complete a uh, fully API driven experience of 470 banking process APIs, uh, which can be catered to multiplier effect of any experience layer uh, available on a fully cloud uh, enabled scalability model using Kubernetes and a cloud native approach. So wherever you have a cloud service provider, and of course we are cloud agnostic, wherever you will find a cloud service provider, we can go on in any of those models, uh, either, or we de deploy it on an on-prem cloud environment uh, set up especially for that region. So you look at how the customer needs to be serviced. What is the need of the customer? Not everyone would need a, 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 a large wealth propositions or a PFM or something. You need to look at in a digital environment, you need to look at your customer segment you need to be able to deliver what that customer needs, not what we want to deliver to them. And that's the flexibility we bring in our core uh, where you are able to choose modular uh, architectures, modular uh, compositions and APIs which can be driven as and when required. And what we've done is delivered with speed. So delivery of speed means we've been able to have an MVP in less than three months. And that's what uh, puts us uh, dif differentiating from other partners is how we see the market of digital banking is be the ability to deliver fast, to test the market, to test the hypothesis, because digital banking is not 
a a very rigid industry it is a it is an ever changing platform it is an ever changing landscape and we should be able to change and pivot from one point to another based on the customer's actual feedback actual data and the actual requirement coming in so the ability to go fast test and validate and be able to change on the go that is something which is a game changer uh, in the the financial inclusion agenda the the budgets and the getting the economies of scale is something which we are able to deliver to our clients and bring down that the cost of ownership without impacting the enterprise features so imagine a financial institution a micro institution having 10000 customers uh in a in a in a district being able to use a fully cloud native technology which a large tier one bank aims and uh, and visions to have one they're able to do it and they're able to access it on their fingertips for their customers that's the kind of change and disruption we are bringing to the market next slide please so as a future outlook what we what we see and how, what we're consulting and advising our clients across the three regions uh, be it africa be it mina or asia pacific uh, go digital with a cloud native strategy bring in the acquisition and the intuitiveness within your acquisition of customers and set the right expectation collaborate because collaboration is one key area where you can actually diverse your investments as a financial institution and leverage on your partners ecosystem partners customer base while you retaining the, the core of the platform or the core service which is custodianship of funds uh, so you need to leverage technologies you cannot keep investing on your own and the best way is to collaborate and leverage on investments done by other startups or other institutions and create and co-create i must say it is about all about co-creation of tailored technology experiences for your customers and engage your customers without engaging your customers without having their feedback without having their uh, in uh, uh, the information what you require you cannot design and deliver digital banking propositions you need to deliver what your customer wants how they want it at their convenience not at our convenience so hence enhancing the overall proposition be it transaction be it payments or be it even cards or any of those basic services which unfortunately a lot of people do not have access to this is how you basically start engaging your clients start collaborating to drive down efficiency and economies of scale and using the digital uh, uh, the principles of going digital as the way forward in ensuring that whatever the institutions are doing you're able to deliver on that promise that you are a truly a digital organization Kyle, thanks. I think very, very interesting perspective from you as a code base, as an innovator, and a very interesting case study on Africa. I think so. In summary, I think all the panelists are having a aligned view that all the three Cs and extended to five Cs are the keys to the core banking, and the digital core is going to survive in a different way. There are some interesting questions which has come our way, and I'll offer these to panelists. The first one is a very interesting question from Ram, and the question is: uh, Do you consolidate your core, or do you hollow the core? Because that's been a challenge most CIOs and CEOs are facing. So uh, I will invite Arun for you to comment on how do you see the trend on consolidation versus hollow. Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity, and it's a great question. Uh, we get this question uh, a lot. And um, I, I think the answer is it depends on the core you have. Um, if, if the core that you have is not front to back designed for digital, then you may have no choice but to replace, replace it in some form. Uh, however, if it is designed, then there is a progressive way to uh, evolve it and consume. And it may just require um, you know, adding some components and a platform that allows you to collaborate and, and compose these components. 
as you progressively replace. So I really think it depends on the core that you have. It's important to have a, a core that is front to back imagined cloud native. Uh, and as long as they have that base, you can evolve. I'll just give one example, the, you know, again, from our uh, history that we had, we had an earlier release, uh, an old release, and we were able to bring our client into the cloud because we have the same code base. And it was a very painless process. It, it took us two months to bring them to the cloud. So, you know, there are ways to do this without necessarily uh, destroying the value that you've already built. Interesting, very interesting. So moving further, very interesting question, Rahil, for you. Uh, you spoke about digital new generation core. What do you see a typical budget that one needs to set aside and the time required to roll out the digital core and how much time and effort one should plan for testing it? Because of course, testing will be an accountability of bank and its digital team. Right? did you get the question? Can you repeat your, your voice was breaking? So the question is, uh, what is the typical budget required for going down the digital core along with the timeline and the budget? And what should one plan as a bank for testing of the digital core? See, in, in the budget depends on an institution's requirements. Uh, I cannot get, give you an off, uh, off the pack amount, uh, but the time period which takes us to go live is less than three months. Uh, the testing is dependent on how you incrementally release features and products. Uh, it, it, it would be, it, it can range from uh, X months. Uh, we, have, we have delivered automated testing as well. So it all depends on how the setting is there. But overall, the need to go full digital is looked into various uh, planned objectives. So you look at MVP, you look at, you look at releases, you look at uh, agile sprints, uh, and you also design your go-to-market based on those agile sprints from a core perspective as well. So not anymore is just the front-end customer is agile. Even your core deployments can be agile and you can actually achieve uh, those benefits or cost benefits or cost efficiency rather than burdening everything uh, on a single bank uh, and, and wait for 12 months and expose your cost too much. So from that perspective, uh, it, it, you, have, you can manage the costs uh, based on the, the agile format and the agile concepts of delivering uh, uh, on, on that model. Very interesting. The next question is, I think, Prandi, for you. And the question is focused around when you say because the microservices and you spoke a lot about how you deliver it. How do you ensure that the microservices which you built is sufficient to launch a retail or a corporate digital core? Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting question. So, uh, uh, you know, pretty much catalogs are available that look at minutely the composable solution sets. And within that, what are the interconnected APIs and in what form the, the component microservices can be exposed. So, so I, would, I would pretty much answer that as a, a catalog of APIs, connected microservices under a composable solution is what uh, you know, Intellect offers to its clients as a complete reassurance that all the endpoints needed for integration are taken care of. Over and above this, our SDK allows for any new APIs to be created in a DIY format. And therefore, uh, the completeness of uh, the microservices deployment is based on that. Thanks, thanks, Randeep. I think uh, great having all of you panelists with us. We run out of the time now, and we had 100 plus participants and uh, interesting questions. I couldn't answer all of them, but I'm happy to send out an email back to the people. I've got the questions with me and really appreciate you spending an hour with us and sharing your perspectives. Uh, all the best and keep digitizing the core. Yeah, that I'll close the session.